is a movie about a romance novelist who believes that she has no more stories to write, both in her career and in her life. But then she gets whisked away on this adventure, this very larger than life adventure, um, that kind of becomes like one of her fantasy novels. And her cover model, who she does not get along with, goes to try to rescue her and together, they start to come together and she realizes that she does have more stories to write, not only fantasy romance stories, but she has more chapters in her life. Out this woman who, this, this, this author, who life has taken a sharp left turn and she doesn't know where to go now. And there's this feeling that there is no next chapter in her life, but this, character is taken on a wild crazy adventure where she's meeting crazy uh, um, characters Marini I make movies I, I direct and write with my brother and uh, we uh, right now are making lost city I'm Adam and I'm six foot three 180 pounds and I'm reading for Adam the director they always ask me my height and my weight it's what everyone's interested in Liza Chasen, I'm a producer on The Lost City. My name is Sandra Bullock and I play Loretta Sage in Lost City. Sage is a writer of many, many romance novels. She's a shut-in. She would prefer to stay home and eat cheese uh, in the safety of her home. Nothing wrong with that, right? Um, and she experienced loss years before and just has found great comfort in her home, in her books, and in her words, and in her brain. She doesn't feel the need to go out and have an adventure because she writes about it. So she experiences it in her imagination, but she doesn't feel the need to physically go out and have adventures until. Hi, I'm Channing Tatum. I play Dash, um, but really my actual name is Alan Finkelstein. And is it very much not Dash. Let's just say that Dash is a completely uh, fictitious hero of a, of a swashbuckling character that always rides in on a white horse or swings in on a vine or a rope or something, you know, and saving the day. And Alan is the very farthest thing from that. He's probably, who knows if he's ever been in a fight in his life. Um, but he's, he's not lack of trying, that's for sure. He's, I, I think he's a guy that probably was pretty embarrassed to get this job, you know, at, at a certain point. And then all of a sudden kind of had an epiphany of like what kind of a beautiful opportunity this is to be able to play this character that brings so much joy to people. People get lost in the idea of who Dash is and he, you know, thought what nobler of a, of a job could you have than just to like actually make people's days and make people happy and let people just go for the ride of escapism. And, you know, I don't think he really, I don't think he really believes he's Dash. I don't think he's totally crazy, but I think he would like to believe that he has Dash qualities, like maybe some more inner qualities that maybe aren't the, the hero qualities, but you know, the good heart and the, and the reason to want to be a hero. My name is Bowen Yang. I play Ray, the moderator at Romancing the Page, the Los Angeles romance novelist convention. Um, and he's a bit of a smarmy character who has some familiarity with, uh, with Loretta and, and Dash. That's it, that's, that's Ray. It seems that Ray has probably moderated some conversations like this before with both Dash and Loretta. They seem to know him and uh, I introduce Loretta after they play this really thrilling sizzle reel for the book, uh, this trailer for the book. It heavily features Dash and the audience gets really amped to see him. I introduce Loretta first. The tepid response from the audience, even though she's the author of these 20 plus books. And um, then I of course bring Dash out and then to much fanfare, everybody's very excited to see him. And I, and Ray, my character is trying to craft questions that 
facilitate some nice nuanced response from Loretta, but Dash kind of, you know, steamrolls and 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 takes takes the reins and answers on her behalf in a way that would seem generous. He thinks he's doing her a favor by like just kind of taking point on on answering these questions, but um, she kind of feels stepped on a little bit, and so that kind of sets up this tension between the two characters that is explored very very well for the rest of the film. So it's it's it's, it's neat. The character is there to sort of mm, push her buttons a little bit, sort of fawn over Dash as everyone else does at the convention. Um, and I'm sort of unearthing and excavating a lot of stuff that Loretta hasn't had to think about because she's been sort of holed up in her wonderful house writing this book. And um, I'm there to sort of contextualize how she is maybe having a difficult time getting back out there with the whole book tour of it all. And so it's great. I'm Dan Radcliffe and I play uh, Abigail Fairfax in, in Lost City. The name Abigail has been a, a, a source of, obviously it's a, it's a point of amusement in the film. He's slightly defensive about having, uh, you know, he's clearly been told as a girl's name his entire life and has been insisting that it is a gender neutral name. Um, and, uh, but I have also been obviously under every hotel that we go into, we're all checked in under our character names. So whenever I uh, have been going for like, you know, I went to get a massage at one point or whenever I, they look at me and go, Abigail? And I'm like, yes, yes, that's me, I'll sign it. And, and you get a little note, I've been sending the directors pictures of, uh, you get like a letter from the hotel saying, and they've all said, dear Mrs. Fairfax, um, please, you know, enjoy your stay here. So I sent that to the directors to much amusement is a publicist, PR, best friend. She's like all in one to Loretta, played by Sandra Bullock. Um, and she's her longtime best friend, who knows that her friend has had some time, too much time in her opinion, off the market, not doing what she is called to do and her passion, which is writing. And also I think is a duality of her passion of life. Um, and as her friend, she's trying to motivate and encourage her to get back out there. Beth realizes cops can't help her, FBI, no one. Um, they get this wild option of potentially like a bounty hunter or black ops person. Um, and while she's like, okay, we'll see what that comes of it, I'm gonna also see what I can do on my end. And so she makes a very adventurous decision to leap into the unknown, literally, and go on a quest to find her best friend. He flies that plane there, so he's a cargo pilot and he's an island hopping cargo guy, uh, uh, and uh, which is a very adventurous thing to do. And he's a little crazy and eccentric, so it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a fun role. It's Patty Harrison and I play Allison, media manager. So her job is to kind of, you know, keep Loretta on the pulse, make young people like Loretta, uh, make young people be excited about um, Loretta's books and her work. Half is this mysterious, good-looking henchman. Right-hand man uh, to Mr. Fairfax, who's played by the wonderful Dan Radcliffe. Raph is a very mysterious guy, but with a presence so strong. Raph is native to the island, so he's, even though he's loyal to his boss. As an islander, I should know, we are very connected to our roots. And that's like the things that Raph we are navigating throughout the movie. That, you know, uh, the loyalty to, to his boss and what he knows is, is right. several years ago. It was brought to me as an actor and a producer. And they, it was, I think it had been sitting on a shelf for about seven years. And I'd read it before, a couple years before, and I was like, no, no, it's not my cup of tea. And then I read it again, and it, either life had changed and my perceptions had changed, or I was ready to do something like that. And it, um, I said, okay, let's, let's do it. And then I called up my friend Liza Chase, and I said, you want to team up? Um, she said, yeah. And then we got to uh, Dana Fox, the brilliant Dana Fox, our, our writer, and had her delve in with us. I've known Sandy a long time, um, just friendly, uh, not professionally. And she and I sort of reconnected after a 
not having seen each other for a long time to talk about kind of opportunities and you know sort of what could we find that might be interesting to do together and very soon after that she called me and she said you know I read a script I think there's a great idea and if you agree I think we should do it. I found out at the beginning was like a rumor Ooh, something big is coming there's a big movie that's coming it's gonna have eight listers so I heard that like last year and then okay it's gonna be a Paramount picture uh, Sandra Bullock is attached to it Shannon Tatum and I thought like wouldn't it be cool if I have the opportunity to be in that movie so they called me and they told me you know there can, can you send a self tape and just send a cell tape uh, here are the, the, the lines, and if you can, if you can make like a small video, like make it funny, can be a, a monologue, and I thought, let me just send a video telling the producers why I can be a good asset for the movie. Like I'm gonna give them seven reasons. And I just sent that, and it was like, I can do this, I don't know if this worked, but you know, I think that is good for the movie. Maybe you can use it, maybe not, I don't know. And all of a sudden, they call me like, you have a callback <laughs> with the Nee brothers. I'm like, what? And seriously? Because I never thought like they were gonna, since it was such an important part, I thought like they're gonna bring somebody from the States. And I did the, the callback with the Nee brothers and, and it was amazing. First of all, I like loved them at the beginning since when I met them, I was like, I love these guys. And I did my callback, went home. Two weeks later, they called me like, you got the part, I'm like. It was the, the the script as a whole. I mean, obviously, like, when you get a script and you're like, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum are the leads, there is an aspect of you that, like, particularly with both of those particular people, where, like, I love most of what they do. Like, I think they make great choices. So immediately, you're like, this is interesting and cool. Um, and then, yeah, just I don't know, the script was fantastic, and this one is just like an example of a, a fantastic like rollicking like adventure movie of the type that we don't really see anymore. There's like, because there is a self awareness and a self consciousness to this script, but it's also just like it is what it is. There's so much fun, and it's like there's an innocence to it, um, while at the same time in this one being able to like. You know, it's those situations where, every, you know, it's real, like, life and death, but everyone's still very quippy and funny, and, you know, it's just that sort of heightened um, movie world. And, yeah, I don't know, it's it seems like a rare thing now to get a film like that that also feels really good. 100% this is a movie I would see. I read the script and I was like, oh, this is, like, a big studio film. Like decently budgeted comedy. I mean, I'm like, you know, those things don't really get made anymore. As, as, a, as a comedy fan, as a comedy writer, as a comedy actor, um, the stuff that I grew up watching. And I even told Sandy, I was like, you know, I, I don't usually say this to people, but um, people like her, I, I, I said, but you know, you're, these films were so formative for me. And this is just a really great sort of revisiting of that genre for me. And I can't believe I'm on the other side of the lens for this, it's great. I got an email from my rep saying that Adam and Aaron were interested in meeting with me about a part in the movie. We knew it would be this funny. Um, because of the subject matter, you put oil and vinegar together, you're gonna have problems, and hopefully those problems are funny. Um, you have someone who shouldn't be in nature, in nature. Uh, you have a cover model who is trying to be the hero. Uh, to get the shut-in author out of the jungle, and and neither one of them should be in any atmosphere other than a hermetically sealed building with air conditioning. Pretty singular from the from the outset. Um, you know, we both recognized that this was a film we hadn't seen for a long time. That it was a fun, big theater you know, theatrical experience. And I think in a world where you're looking for real, like true popcorn movies too, um, to bring people back and, and, and have that com kind of communal experience watching a movie in a theater, um, we were really excited about the potential. I don't know the Knee Brothers. I mean, they seem to know all, all of my colleagues and associates. They're pretty entrenched in LA with a lot of the comedy people there. And so um, 
it was lovely to just meet them and just feel like it was a very natural sort of acquaintanceship turned into a friendship, turned into a professional relationship where I was taking direction from them. They're, they're, they're wonderful. Uh, a pair of directors once before. Um, this is my second time doing it and it's been great both times. I think I always expect in my mind there to be like conflict and them to be sort of trying to hash, but I think the reality is they do most of that in pre-production. They, they get to the point where they're very much on the same page by the time they get on set. So you certainly, I've never seen them like I don't know, like disagree strongly about something, or but I'm sure they do, but they just keep it um, away from set. Um, but yeah, they're they're lovely. They're so, uh, you know, this is a massive movie, and you know, for them to just kind of walk in, obviously they they're experienced, they've done stuff before, but never anything like very few of us have done stuff at like this kind of scale, um, and they've just been completely unfazed by it. I've just like been super pre prepared and you know, really like fun and still finding, you know, very prepared, but also allowing room for us all to play and things to happen on the day. Um, they're really, they're both really funny as well in very different ways, but they're both really funny people. And I think they, you know, that is really imbuing the film with something lovely. Um, and just as human beings to be around on set, they are lovely. And they're, they're I think have, you know, directors are one of the few people that never really get to watch that many other people do their job. Like, I work, I see other actors act all the time. Directors very rarely see other people direct. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always, like, saying to them, like, you're really good. Like, just never change, please. Like, because you prove you can make a massive movie like this without screaming and shouting and becoming terrible. <laughs> Heck, to meant each other very well. So it's not, it's not confusing. Uh, I, I really appreciate the way that you, the, having uh, different feedbacks of, of, of a scene that make it richer for me, you know, make it clearer for me. They are both very interesting uh, as individuals and then their dynamic together. They're both very, very sweet, very funny, and together they have this sort of... Maybe because my relationship with my siblings is very violent and chaotic, to see two siblings that have such a cohesive like relationship where they really understand each other. Aaron is quiet cowboy. Adam is tall, giggly laugh man. Uh, together, it which seem you know on paper sounds like they would be clashing a lot but it has been really amazing to see how open they are to each other's ideas, and it's very endearing. There is sort of an understanding between Adam, Aaron, and me, myself, coming from a comedy space. I think their instincts are both very, uh, very kind of elevated, or I don't know, they just seem to have a offbeat uh, point of view when it comes to jokes landing and stuff and exploring those sort of moments in the script. So uh, it is it is nice to feel understood by them because I think they, they really love comedy. They're both really funny. And um, I don't feel like I have to explain why I'm going for a joke the way that I'm going for. They're pretty supportive and like uplifting and they can like riff off of those things very easily. Devine is so tuned in to what's going on. I feel like I haven't really experienced that quickly, you know, stepping on set and feeling pulled kind of into the scene. She's like an incredible improviser, just like razor sharp, lightning fast. She's so funny, she's so smart. Working with Sandy and Liza was amazing. I, I and it, it did, it was a difference um, working with two female producers and I really, I loved it. I loved the tone that it set and it felt like the right tone for a female-led film. Liza comes from a world of just the most incredible filmography. Her, her filmography is so impressive and intimidating that she gave us this incredible comfort of somebody that we really trusted to 
guide us when maybe we're focusing too much on one side of the story or not enough on another. I think she's really good at big picture thinking about a movie and, and so balanced in the way that she brings a note to you where it's just, it's not, she's not someone who needs to hear the sound of her own voice. She just gives you a good, solid, smart note. And when she does, you know it, you should listen to it. Um, Sandy's incredible because I think that, you know, when you take a project with an actor who's also a producer, you may think like, oh, that means their name is on it. But she is such an active part of the process. And she was on all the calls, all the meetings, had so much great input, cared very much about character in the movie. And she cares about all the characters. It's not just like, what is Loretta going to do or say? Sandy cares about what Beth's character arc is, what Nana's character arc is. It's a huge priority. So it's, it's amazing having two very engaged, active producers who were also simultaneously very trusting of us. Which I still can't quite believe that I'm in a stage in my life where I'm calling Sandra Bullock Sandy, but that's, that's she encourages us to do it. It took me a few weeks. Um, but she is um, almost more intimidating because she is so nice. Like, it's really, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, you never do. And um, to meet someone who has been as like operating at such a high level in this industry for so long and still has completely managed to retain like all of her humanity and kindness and um, she's just a real person, you know, and it, it's, 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 yeah, it's a real pleasure to, to be able to work with her. Work with somebody the caliber that Sandra Bullock is, is the kind of thing that you dream of, of as a filmmaker. It's also the kind of thing where you have to wonder, like, is this a be careful what you wish for kind of thing? Like, this is like, this is a international movie star, an Oscar winner, a person who's just like operating on this whole other level. And she is an absolute dream to work with. She, she cares so much. She's so invested in the movie, in her character, in, in, in finding and developing that character and that being a conversation with us in making choices that are, that are good for the film too. And we were throwing her in really, really gnarly situations. And Sandy's so game. She's so open to doing things that, that will make the movie great because she wants to make a great movie. And I think that's such a big part of what makes her who she is. Working with Sandra Bullock, at, at the beginning I was super nervous. I'm talking about somebody that I admire, that I've seen, so, like all of her movies. And I'm talking like I'm a America's sweetheart in my country. So I, I was very nervous, but the first day I got to set, she had written this beautiful letter, welcoming to, welcoming me to the to the movie, and it made it all better. And then I met her, and it was like we known each other for, you know, we known each other before. She was so, so lovable, uh, so funny, and it took the pressure away since day one. I. I used to love Sandra Bullock before. Now I adore her like I wanna name a kid. I cannot have more children, but I'm willing just to go out, have a kid, hopefully it's a girl, and name her Sandy. And if it's a boy, I'll name her Sandy. So uh, it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. Like, and, and not only working with her, I have conversations about family and it's something that, that I will treasure forever. Sandy kicks the tires very 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 well in almost anything and every single thing that she does. I mean I've, she's a she's a beast of a producer and I mean not, not we all know what kind of an actor she is but I mean that's that's a, she's a unicorn as far as that goes but I really really trusted her her instinct that if she's put these boys through the paces that they they were worth their salt so and it, it turned out to be every bit true as soon as we started working with Sandy and Liza it became very clear that this was exactly the kind of collaboration that 
we want uh, on a project and that they were extremely accessible and available and ready to get in there in the weeds with us from the beginning. Channing is perfect for this role for many, many reasons, but one of those reasons is it doesn't take long to fall in love with Channing and, and, and really uh, appreciate him. And so he can do, you can have his character do some, some dumb things and um, make some big mistakes and you still just love the guy. And, uh, and Channing brings that, that heartfelt quality that we wanted for for this character that we wanted for Alan, we we wanted to discover that there's there's this deep, sensitive, caring person underneath the bravado and the uh, the flowing wig. Loretta is somebody who has lived this beautiful life, um, who has achieved a lot of the things that she wanted to achieve. Um, but has gone through a heartbreak that has stalled her out. Um, she's gotten to this point in her life where it's hard to see f the future. It's hard to imagine more. Um, and it takes this extreme event for her to start to open her eyes and see that there's a lot of life left. The character of Alan is, is such a lovable one because he is just so genuinely sweet. And I think it's, it was very intentional that we wanted to have this adventure movie where your your male lead is so kind and sweet and and that you can be masculine and soft that you can be this hunky guy but also just be kind and um he just day one as soon as he we started shooting scenes with him it was like channing's perfect for him because channing is like a sweet puppy dog he is the so kind and happy and positive and just brought so much life to that role. I'd say Sandra on set is very silly. Um, there's a strong sense of play. Um, she doesn't take her job too serious in a bad way, but is very dedicated. Um, and she's very meticulous and sees all the details. Um, but she's truly really playful and easygoing. To be quite honest with you, it's been one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, I mean, I've heard amazing things about her. That's the rumors, if you will, uh, around the industry of just how amazing she is. Um, but to witness it in person is, is quite overwhelming, to be quite honest. It's almost as if you would think the mass of her celebrity is equal to the mass of her genuine heart and niceness and happiness. and. She's just a true team player. Um, and it's really cool as another woman to bear witness to someone being in the limelight, but also being in the limelight with being a producer and all the many things that she has done from top to bottom to ensure that people are happy and get what they need and feel comfortable. And at the same time, ultimately making the project the best that it can be. Channing's wonderful. He's very chill, doesn't take himself too serious, very goofy. Uh, and silly, so talented, um, and two, I think they're a very good uh, duo with one another because their sense of playfulness um, is very kind, uh, very diligent uh, with his craft. Uh, he's been really putting in a lot of time and effort to become this character. Channing is someone who does want to do his own stunts and did his own stunts and would do the craziest stuff. I mean, it, we, we would definitely put him through the ringer. And it's it's one of those things where you have uh, an actor like Channing who is so physically funny. He's so good at physical comedy. He's like this beautiful man that somehow is also a total clown. And so it's just great to throw him in those situations and see what happens. I think that's the genius of Sandy and Channing is that they can take a scene that maybe another actor wouldn't find that extra layer, that extra physical layer that adds so much nuance and depth comedically. Um, Sandy is always coming up with an idea or finding something inside of a scene that adds this weird physical comedy thing that is does kind of harken back to 
Lucille Ball or Charlie Chaplin or just like great classic physical comics. Um, and Channing is the same way. Andy's very funny and crazy and she's a good kid. She's a really nice person. And so it's great to have scenes with her and just to know her. She's a cool person. I'm very happy. This is a huge movie. Like, like I was telling you before, this is the kind of movie that I used to watch when I was a kid. And I love that. It has the adventure, it has the, the romance, it has the explosions, it has like everything, and everything is big. And also, it has two great, two, I had like an amazing cast. You have two Oscar winners in this movie. When you see Shannon and, and you see uh, Sandra together, Sandy together, you, they're, they're very good together. Here's the nice thing about Chan is that he's a physical comedian. He's, he's a comic who physically uses his body to convey the joke. I understand that, that's how I operate. And it, it's so nice to have a partner that you feel A, as comfortable as I did with, with Channing, B, we have really good timing. We're different enough that we complement each other, but we're also really helpful to the other one. If someone bats something at you, the other one will. But it's all physical. And, um, you know, this whole film was, just, we were glued at each other's sides. So you have to really like the person and feel safe with them. And I really did. And, and I hope he felt the same with me. But I just like being in his presence. I like trying to see what physically we could come up with that day in a, in a tight situation, because it's always in a tight, uncomfortable situation. Channing Tatum brings to Dash uh, a gold mine. Um, you know, I mentioned he's a physical comic. He, he, he's just so self-deprecating. There's nothing about him that's ego-driven driven in the role of Dash, um, which is so important, because Dash is such an innocent. He's not a narcissist. Dash is just wide-eyed and sweet and not many people can play that because there's not many wide-eyed sweet people, but Channing has such an intuition comedically about Dash and how to play it. it. It just, it was just so sweet. And then on top of it, he's really handsome and he's Channing. Um, you know, he's got a six pack and um, I don't. So I'm glad one of us had it. Uh, and I'm glad he was willing to take his shirt off and his pants, because um, I wasn't. So that's what he brings to it. Ass and abs. <laughs> Sorry, is that disrespectful? I think not. <laughs> very, very funny. And she is like as game to play and make jokes and as anybody else. Um, so it, that was a, such a relief to, to get to work with her in the capacity that I did because most of my scenes are with her and Davine. And I think uh, hopefully it comes across in the film that we played together well, and because uh, we were laughing a lot. There are plenty of you know actor producers out there doing their thing. I, I think she's uh, a unique. She stands alone in in her capacity to sort of deliver 150 percent on both fronts. Right? She never ever. Um, didn't wear both hats. Obviously a fan, and you know, like the rest of the world, got to watch the guy grow up into a just like an adult actor. And he was always just like the nicest guy, and you never know if that's just like him just being a really charismatic, personal person. But he is exactly that. He is just open and hilarious and engaging and, and just an insanely talented kid. I got to have one uh, pretty big scene with, with Patty and Devon and, and like, they're just pros. Like, they're just, they just like, you know when somebody just shows up and they're not like on their phone, they're not lollygagging around, they're just like, you show up and you, and you like do your job and you nail your part and like it was, that's what it felt like to me. Patty and I both came up doing comedy together in Brooklyn, in New York, when she was out there. I've been a New Yorker for all my adult life, and so uh, it's, it's just nice to see Patty as a familiar face, but also just a close friend, and she is so funny and is so, like, ingrained into, like, the whole culture of the movie, and, like, it's, you know, it feels like I'm coming into, like, summer camp, and she's, like, one of the the hot camp counselors or something. She's, she's fantastic, and so, yeah, I, I knew her going into this. I knew she was involved 
And so that made it very easy for me to say, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to for, for Aaron and Adam. And so it's been really nice. Divine is here and she plays, I think, uh, Sandra Bullock's character's agent or publicist or something, or manager. And so she came looking for her and I run into her and I'm helping her along her adventure. So, you know, I'm this idiot and helping her and she has no choice because she's got to find Sandra Bullock. So there you have it. You know, there's something about Daniel that since, since you see, we've seen him grow throughout the movies, throughout all his life, you feel like you know, you feel like you want to like tell him, I'm so proud of you. And having the opportunity to work with him, the first thing that he said to me, that I was, of course, I was like a little bit nervous about working with him. He's, he's a veteran. He's been doing this his whole life. And the first time we met each other, he's like, we only had four lines. And he went like, excuse me, do you think we got, I know it's four lines, but can we rehearse it together? I was like, wow, he's just like us. <laughs> he's just an actor like us, yes. And we hit it up right away. He's, he's amazing. He's such a talented guy. I've learned so much, uh, like working with him. Uh, he's he's a very he's very passionate. We made it very comfortable to work with him. Elis Daniel Radcliffe plays our villain, um, but the brilliance of our villain is that he has to be the most affable, um, seductive, normal, wealthy, handsome. Uh, non-threatening villain at first and then you slowly see him unravel and Daniel has these piercing blue eyes and they're either the softest sweetest most inviting pair of eyes and then when he starts going nuts he he uh his transformation into Fairfax the the, the evil part of, of Fairfax is is very creepy he, he's brilliant he's a brilliant actor who who we've seen grow up in front of our eyes and I, to me, the most exciting character in this film, I think what I'm excited for audience to experience is the Daniel Radcliffe that he is now that they will not expect. His enthusiasm is infectious. Like he is, he is so meticulous. He is so like, if, if there was anyone ill-prepared on this film, it was me and Champ. If there was anyone over-prepared, it was Daniel. Daniel really did. He was one of the first people that came to mind and we, we're delighted that he engaged so quickly and even more so when he showed up and we were like, oh yes, brilliant. He came in and, you know, we auditioned a lot for that role and we had an idea of, of, of the kind of actress we wanted and she is a very serious, like Yale trained actress, um, comedian, and she brought this power and as you know, as a as a sort of female boss that we really wanted in this story, but she also brought a warmth and a and an intellect that you understood the connection between these two people. That it was deeper than just a professional relationship. That at the core of this movie is a is is a, is is a is a friendship, like a historical friendship. And Beth winds up going on this crazy journey because she kind of. Just nobody's helping her, and she's not a woman who's going to sit around. She's a woman who's going to take matters into her own hands. Uh, is Beth's new kind of assistant slash social media expert, um, played by Patty Harrison, and and Patty was the only person we went to for that role. Patty was somebody I had worked with previously on something, and I raised the idea of her early on and the guys, um, Adam and Aaron Nee, the directors, really loved her. So we went straight to Patty and were like, do you want to come do this? Um, and she's sort of a quirky comedian and she's very popular with obviously the young set. So that was nice for us to have that represented in the movie. He plays this character, Jack Trainer, who is someone who goes in and tactically retrieves kidnapped people and you know does things like that. Um, he had a very sort of, uh, he had a very specific take on his character, very granola, very Buddhist, very uh, a man of the, of the earth. And um, he just, when he and Chan, because they spent most of their time together, him and Chan, and they are so good together. Like, I want to see a road movie with just the two of them. And um, he comes in and tactically uh, retrieves Loretta, 
my character um, with Channing following him like a, 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 a Labrador puppy. Which we all do with Bradley. We all follow him. Davine's amazing. She, uh, she's, she's, we're best friends. We've worked together for many, many years. She's the one who keeps the ball rolling. She's, she's burning the candle at every end. She's a businesswoman who's trying to make her mark. And she has the one client, the one client that she's put all her chips on who is just unraveling, who is not living up to her, her end of the deal. Um, but she has to also be super sensitive and kind about this woman who's just flailing. She's an aging writer who's just flailing. She just cannot get her groove. And, and the great thing about Dave Vine's part is that she has to carry the energy, the urgency, and the comedy. And she does all three flawlessly. Patty, you just turn the camera on and just let her vomit out whatever she has in her head. And you are laughing, you are crying, you are shocked. <laughs> you are, I don't know how she does what she does because she has a stream of consciousness in her comedy that can go so dark and you find yourself laughing and you're like, is it okay to laugh? Like she's, she's just, she's really brave. She's really brave in her comedy and she's brilliant when she's really still. You know, not a lot of people can pull a comedy off being super still and dry. Um, and her and Beth together, her and Davine together, Beth, Davine's character, Beth, um, and, and, and Patty's name is Allison. The, the two of them together are, are so good. Oscar was the first person I wanted to cast before we had anybody else cast. When we did this, I said, I, we need to, I told the writer, we need to write a part for Oscar. We need to be, I need to be in his presence again. I didn't have enough to do with him, but so we wrote Oscar before we actually hired him. So we wrote the role, realized there was another film coming after them, and I was like, wait a minute, we write this for him and we haven't cast him? So he was the first actor on the list of casting. Fairfax is someone who grew up in privilege, who has the world at his fingertips, but he's deeply insecure. He's in the shadow of his younger brother and trying to figure out how he can separate himself from his fair, famous family and distinguish himself as his own person. And so he does that by saying, okay, I, what Fairfax has done is because he can't have the same success as the rest of his family in the modern world, he's holding on to the ancient. Casting Daniel Radcliffe in that role is one of the greatest things that happened on this movie. I can't imagine anyone else playing the part. I am in love with Daniel Radcliffe. He is such an incredible actor. He's so prepared. He's so thought it through, but then he's completely pliable as well and willing to try anything. We wanted him to be this kind of like, he. I think he envisions himself as not a Bond villain, but as James Bond. That was kind of the thing that we would pitch to him is like, you don't think of yourself as a villain, you think of yourself as this like international man of mystery. Um, and also this kind of like Gatsby-esque figure. And so we wanted to put him in this white suit that is so impractical for a jungle adventure. Just put him in things that you like would not wear in 110 degree weather in the jungle. He's hilarious, but we had did, uh a TV show together before. We did People of Earth on TBS, so I had already had experience working with him. He's so, I mean, obviously, we all know, you know, famously from The Office, but he's hilarious, and it's just an ease with it, but he creates such great nuance um, and creative characters. When Davine first came up, I had seen her in the Dolomite movie, and I thought she was incredible but it's a very dramatic role in that movie. And I thought, well, this character needs to have a lot of life and be, you know, like big and just, she needs to not get uh, overshadowed by Sandy, you know, cause Sandy's like pops on screen and you're just like, how are you gonna make this person um, like live in the scene together with her? And then I watched her in High Fidelity where she's like big and huge and funny and crazy. And I was like, okay, this might, this might really work. And then we, we read with her and it was it was obvious. She's incredible, I love Davon. The character Loretta that we were setting up, that she was a very intelligent, very capable, successful person. And so we needed to be able to pair her with someone who is formidable because you need someone who you can put alongside Sandra Bullock 
and have them be her, not just her her friend, not just her publisher, but kind of like the person who is holding her life together. Um, and so you you need a formidable personality for that. And Dave Vine was able to fill that role, was able to bring that 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 kind of mix of being both supportive and sweet but strong and in control. The way that Oscar came about in this movie was we felt like and when we came onto the movie, Davine's character didn't go on the adventure at all. She was always at home, like manning the phones, trying to get help and not getting help. And we felt like this character deserves a, a, an adventure of her own and that we wanted to see her um, have her own mini arc with like meeting weird characters and going through weird situations. And Sandy had had such an amazing experience working with Oscar that she just brought him up and she was like, what about if we wrote something for Oscar for this? Plays um, uh, Rafi in the movie, who is one of my, he's sort of my main henchman. Um, and he is somebody that I kind of humiliate a lot and treat very, very badly. But Hector is just like the, the nicest man. He's so good. Um, he's like a, a really, really good actor and just like a pleasure to spend time around. Like he's, um, you know, as I said, a lot of our scenes are, are together. Um, and so I'm very lucky. You know, sometimes you get on a movie and you're like, and you meet the people you're going to be doing most of your stuff with. And you're like, okay, this is going to be some awkward chat at our start marks while we're waiting. Like, um, but but with them, they're just no. He was he's 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 lovely. And um, yeah, I feel really. She was written as this, um, you know, the mill this millennial uh, character who's like another good uh, contrast to Loretta, like just someone in a totally different phase of life with a different mentality about what's cool and how this, you know, publicity should go. Um, and we really thought that that character needed to be the, our, us sort of planting our weird flag where we could have like, this character could say anything, like that nothing's off limits, that, and I, there was never anybody else in our minds but Patty Harrison. I don't get to do really any stunts on this movie, but um, stunt departments are pretty routinely, in my experience, the best. Um, these guys are so much fun and so good and are doing like amazing work um, and are really going to make the action sequences in this film something very, very special, I think. When we brought Marlene on to do costumes, that the jumpsuit was going to be a thing. Uh, going to be a thing because it has to survive not just sitting on a stool at the convention like it was designed to be used for, but we're gonna have to take it through a river and climb a mountainside with it and be in the ocean and all of these, these things that uh, a sequin jumpsuit is not normally able to sustain. So she was gonna have to make different versions of it that still have to look great in all of those situ those situations and, and tailor one that's cut a certain way so that it can work for the waterfall and then this one can work for sitting on that high stool and this one can work for um, you know, being in this situation and that situation and so we had lots of jumpsuits and the jumpsuit got a lot of attention. Fairfax is he is a bad guy, but there is there's a lot of humor to him because he is uh, both bratty and petulant and sort of you know it's clear his all of his villainy is coming from such a like I need to please my dad place <laughs> that he is sort of undercuts any real kind of evil about him. He's just this just this terrible entitled colonialist. <laughs> um, but um, but they are yeah I mean they they do. I mean, the interplay between Channing and Sandra's characters is, is just like lovely, and, and seeing how they switch in those roles throughout the film is, I think, one of the the great things about the writing, um, and what makes it as you read it kind of it's keep it keeps you engaged because they are all real. They're very the the world is. I think that's one of the reasons the script works so well is the world and the adventure of it is incredibly heightened, but everyone still kind of acts like human beings as you would in that situation. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great script. This movie you have to see in the theater. And that's, it, it, it is a classic movie going experience. That's one of the things that we strove for and why we shot the movie in the jungle. Why we really shot on open ocean and in the sweaty hot jungles of the Dominican Republic is because we wanted it to be a big screen experience. It's not a movie that's meant to be watched on your phone. Um, it is a big, epic scale and scope adventure film. Jonathan Sala, the DP, and the, and the knees, and, and it's every and Sandy and everybody that's put like so much effort into the way it looks. And you know, we yeah, there's a lot of action, but I would say there's equal amount of just spectacle, like just just like the way things are lit, how much care is put into them. I've never gotten to shoot on a, on, a, on an island before. I've never gotten to like go to the jungle, and I've been to the jungle, but I've never been to, to work and shoot. And to be here and see how hard everybody works, and and like you know. The mosquitoes, I've been so lucky to not have some of the problems that some other people on the, on the set have just been eating alive. Um, but it's it does, it feels like you're really in a place, you know? I mean, yes, we do do set work and things for certain moments, but a lot of this movie is out in the elements and you really feel it. You really feel like you're you're outside. You really feel the, the, the stickiness of it all. And, I mean, because there was no hiding it. Like you, we just had to, you know, if you're sweaty through your shirt, you're sweaty through your shirt, just because that's where you would be looking if you were in the jungle, running around, running from bad guys. Waterfall was spectacular, and and just and actually in, in that version, I think going early at the waterfall because we had to be pontooned out to this waterfall, where that being week one, and 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 just really kind of committing to this, like we're going to be out in the elements, we're going to be doing it, and everybody's like still new on a movie that everybody's really excited to be on and you're not tired on week like whatever nine and you're just like oh god we got to be on outside in the sun and the humidity and, and like possible rain you know and just we got to really enjoy how beautiful it was and I think all of our you know everybody was excited and you got to kind of set the tone for how big the movie was going to be in a way and like kind of the, the spectacle that it was going to be. I'm obviously a fan and you know like the rest of the world got to watch the guy grow up into a just like an adult actor and he was always just like the nicest guy and you never know if that's just like him just being a really charismatic personal person but he is exactly that he is just open and hilarious and engaging and and just an insanely talented kid I had to um learn how to navigate in a, a onesie jumpsuit with a pair of heels uh, in the jungle with no restrooms um, for 12 hour days. So what you do is you don't drink water and you pray. That's was, that was my training. I did a lot of praying uh, for um, uh, uh, the end of the day so that I could unzip the onesie and get out of it in the middle of the jungle the most uh, fun, even though it was incredibly challenging, was Fairfax's camp. I just, walking onto that set, that was feeling like, wow, this is a big movie. I, this is exactly what we pictured. We made a little lookbook of like how we wanted all that to look, and then uh, you walked onto the set, and you're like, this is it exactly. We benefited from this really generous place, um, not just visually, but environmentally and, and emotionally, and it was just, it was an amazing, amazing journey of many puzzle pieces needing to come together and that did come together to make a film that you want to see in the theaters that you get this big massive landscape you get deep meaningful storytelling you get comedy you get a lot of action you get Bradley Pitt you get Channing Tatum the good thing about the movie is people are gonna see and these are samples of, of the beauty of this island Samana is one of my favorite regions it has one of the most one of my favorite beaches, which is Playa Rincón. So we went to the Itises, which is a beautiful place. It has all these little islands. And and I'm telling you, that's like a little bit of like a sample. We went to Playa Cozón, beautiful beach over there. So that is the beauty of the Dominican Republic. That you have all these beautiful locations and just right there, easy to get to. Get blasé about impressive sets I don't think I don't I think the, whenever you walk onto a place like that and go like oh the the work that has gone into this and making this look so incredible um, particularly when you come to a thing that's like you know when the part of the set is an excavation site 
and there wasn't an excavation site there to begin with. So they did, they, they dug that hole. You know, there's the physical labor and also incredible amount of like skill has gone into this. Um, yeah, it's, it's so cool. I mean, all the time on this, uh, I feel like the art department, whenever you walk on a set and you go, oh, the art department have had real fun here. Because they were, uh, I mean, I guess props and set deck as well, but they, um, the romance novelist convention, mm -hmm. just I'm sure not all of those book titles are going to get in the movie, but just every stall is really funny. Like they've come up with funny book titles and covers for all these romance novels. The, um, even, you know, down to the stuff where you like, uh, when I the, pick up the copy of, of Lost City of D at one point and I'm reading it and you know somebody from props has, has written out a few pages of this romance novel and it yeah it's just it's great I love when you see the, the detail that goes into things that often the audience will never get to see but um, it does it makes you you know it helps when you're I'm an Aaron the way they visualize Ravi they wanted to they wanted to look human they didn't want like a Thug, like a guy that's always like you know, serious and this killer that they want him they wanted to see the changes like subtle change guy I, I had a, a healthy like sort of like okay this wig's gonna be important but I don't think I had any idea of the magnitude of the personality of this wig it from and it was kind of crazy because one of the first things we shot was like the, the romance novel stuff which I think was in a way genius because I don't think I knew who Dash was until that moment and then no matter how much work you do on the script no matter how much like planning you can try to be like funny or fun or wh whatever I'd actually tr really don't try to be funny at all I try to be fun and uh, and you have all these ideas and then all of a sudden um, you just have either a piece of clothing or a scene or a even shoes or something that like you're all of a sudden just like oh I found who he is and it was the wig on this thing the outfit that Loretta wears is necessary because every author should, while they're writing a book, wear a deep drop V, sexy, glittery onesie. And I personally don't read books uh, by authors that don't wear that. As a producer, Sandy is, she's so friendly and funny and like, I think she's just, Top notch, truly like so welcoming, checking in, like making sure everyone's, you know, feeling good about stuff. Uh, it, it has been, it's surreal. Every moment's surreal. It hasn't stopped being surreal. I had a shoot day with Channing and Davine, and that was maybe one of the best days so far. Channing is like so, so funny so positive, very like amazing, uh, an amazing attitude, like keeping, keeps morale up. I think people feel really like relaxed around him. Devine is just so cool and so funny. And I haven't, um, I haven't had a bad shoot day in terms of I think I gauge quality of life by how much, uh, and this is gonna sound really perverted and disgusting, but how much giggling I'm doing. And I was giggling a lot that day, and I've had other days where I've giggled a lot. So. When I got to the Dominican Republic and they drove me from the airport to where we were staying, we drove through the jungle, and I remember thinking, I. I was like, oh, I'm so jealous that, because it's so beautiful. And I was like, I'm really jealous that I'm not going to get to film that or I don't have any action-y scenes in, like, the ocean. I also think people will like the movie because it's really fun. It's just a fun, good-spirited, like, kind of taking it back to movies a, a genre of like action comedy that I haven't seen in a, in a few years it's a beautiful sort of big fantasy sort of thing it's not fantasy genre but it's an adventure and it feels really out there and and I know that 
That's like one of the reasons why I was interested in doing it. The jumpsuit. The jumpsuit. Exactly. Right. Well, so the jumpsuit was Sandy's idea. She, she first of all, she loves a jumpsuit. Just in her real life, she wears a lot of jumpsuits. So I think, I think she liked the idea, and we landed on it as a, as a very comedic idea right out of the gate. Like, it's uncomfortable for a woman to be in a jumpsuit for a long period of time. It's really hard to go pee. Like, just basic stuff. So we posited this idea that this is a woman who hasn't left her house and her publisher is going to put her in this very glittery bright colored jumpsuit that's on loan it's you know two hours she'll have it on and off and then she can go back to her retreat right um and of course this is the thing she's going to get kidnapped in i have tons of snakes at my house so it's normal for me um, i just let them run loose keeps it interesting um, so for me snakes was fine I did, uh, Sandy was like immediately like, let them crawl on me, I want snakes all over me, I'm, snake, I'm cool with snakes. And I was like, are you sure? Cause there's still snakes. Like I know they're trained snakes, but I think like when they talked about the domesticated snakes, it meant like snakes they maybe caught five days ago. I don't know what the cutoff is for a snake being considered domesticated. So I didn't love the idea of snakes crawling all over her body. Um, but she was like, you should ask Channing if he's cool with snakes. And so I, I texted Channing, I was like, hey, just checking, are you cool with snakes? And he's like, my dad used to catch snakes as a job. And like, he's like, of course. I'm like, okay, They're, like we couldn't throw anything at them that was too much. Um, so on the day, we have these uh, tons and tons of snakes that are just like being laid out on the floor. And we have a, a board in between the snakes and Channing and Sandy who are laying on the floor. And we roll cameras and we'd get the snakes warmed up and then you lift the board and the snakes would just start going and being like right around them and going up and through them and stuff and they would do the dialogue, not flinch. It was crazy. I couldn't be more grateful to have Aaron um, as my partner. It's, you know, we're very, we have very similar tastes but we're very different people and I think that we complement each other and bring different things to the table, but what we do for each other and what he does for me just is like having that support system when you're doing something like this is incredible. And you also, you never feel like anything's going to get missed because you're both working so hard and focused on it and there's always that other person who's got your back and is thinking about the same things and focused on the same things and he's just... Um, He's a, he, I think Aaron is a real brilliant guy. He's a real genius. So this jumpsuit, as problematic as it was, was genius. Because had we been in the jungle and I was wearing something brown or khaki, something that was appropriate for the jungle, we would not visually have the film that we have now. We have a sequent jumpsuit that's in fuchsia in this gorgeous greenery. You know where we are. There's not one second, I don't care how far that helicopter shot gets, you know where we are. We save money on visual effects because you know where we are. I'm like a walking disco ball. It's like the whole world saw me on satellite. Um, the taxing thing was uh, just, it's hot. You're in a jumpsuit. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about the jumpsuit for the rest of my life, but would I have changed it? Hell no, because it was funny, it was inappropriate. Here is this woman with a stick up her butt who just couldn't get out of her own way. It was so tight and just, she just couldn't relax and she was in a jumpsuit that she was forced into at the beginning of the film by her bestie. She said, just wear it for two hours, it's on loan, it'll make you sparkly, somehow it will make her sexier, it didn't. And you just return it and we'll be done. Little did she know she would be kidnapped in the jumpsuit, in a jungle, in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I want the audiences to walk away with such escapism. I want you to laugh your ass off. I want, I want you to, I want you to fall in love. And we're gonna do it while dragging you through the mud, sending you on an adventure, like t tropical locations, gorgeous locations, beautiful sunsets, dangerous situations, an incredible group of people that are gonna make their journey really impossible. We're gonna tick all the boxes that we've really been missing because we've gotten very serious, you know. Um, I just want, I just want there to be a joy in the journey in the theater because life has been really, really hard. And now is the time to lean into that kind of thing. And, and we, we brought it and I hope 
I hope they see it and they enjoy it. You know, it's, it's like you're making this for the audience. This is all for the audience. Movies like this are the kind you want to see in the cinema because of how much fun the experience will be and frankly how amazing it will look on the big screen.